What's up, Tweeners? Welcome back to another Tweener Tennis video today here on the channel, and we have another exciting interview for you guys. We have former Cornell tennis player, now Kentucky player, now top 500 player in the world, Alafia Ayeni, who graciously sat down and talked to us while he was playing at the Cleveland Challenger. What was it like being a part of the transfer portal and going from an Ivy League school to a top SEC school? and now having the possibility to put himself and his team into a national championship spot. At the time of recording this, they beat last year's team champions, University of Virginia, who they lost to two times last year, one during the regular season, one during the postseason. But I can't wait to see what this team does this coming year. And I can't wait to see what he does as well. He's a great guy, not only to grow himself as a tennis player, but to grow as a person as well. Now, if you guys want to follow his journey, check out the link in the description to follow him on Instagram and his social medias. But if you guys are new to the channel and you like these types of interviews and you like this type of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's totally free. So we'd love to have you guys join the channel and we'll see you guys in the next one. But now, enjoy our interview with Alafia. Dude, I really appreciate you joining me today. It's been a, it's been a grind for you, at least for the last couple couple weeks. So I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us. Yeah, no problem. Man. No problem. Uh, the thing I have to start with is where, I would have to say, coming from Cornell to Kentucky, what was, I have to say, what was the process like first? What was that process like for you to switch schools like that? You mean from like a recruiting standpoint or just like the change in culture and stuff like that? Let's go recruiting standpoint, because if um, did you know you wanted to switch schools after you finished your four years of eligibility there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was like something that I'd already been thinking about that from, yeah, from the year before I, I went into the portal. I was like, OK, I have two options here. After I finish here, I can either turn pro or I can go back for another year. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the Cornell coaches did a great job, you know, developing my game and everything. But um, at the end of the day, they're, they're very limited with um, just like the amount of the amount of resources at their disposal, you know, okay. um, compared to a non Ivy schools, Ivy's aren't even allowed to get. Uh, athletic scholarships mm -hmm. there's also a lot of rules um in regards to our academic like academic requirements mm -hmm. um what we're allowed to do in terms of athletics is a lot more limited we can't leave very often and when we mm -hmm. do it, it you know you kind of have to show account for each day like there's no yeah there's not very many excused absences there's one time pretty notably uh i was already in the portal by then but like i won our our regional championship and that mm -hmm. was about a week long. It was, I think it was five days long. Mm -hmm. I missed five days of school. And I qualified for the fall nationals as a result of that. And then oh, wow. the Cornell board, there was there was much speculation over whether I would actually be allowed to go to fall nationals because I used up my allotted absence today oh, wow. in, playing, <laughs> in playing the regional championship. Wow. <laughs> so, I didn't so, I didn't uh, know that was that was a problem to have as a college yeah. athlete. Yeah, yeah. I mean, thankfully it was resolved, but like that, I was, that was definitely an, a heads up for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, then obviously recruiting wise, I think it was it was tough to choose between all these programs. There, they're all very good programs, but mm -hmm. you know, I, at the end of the day, I trust the, the Kentucky coaches, and I think that development wise, they're the best. Like in 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 college tennis, they're the best developmental. Like uh, you can look at Gab, the guy I'm gonna play. Um, where he's where he started and where he is now, or even Milan Burion, um, mm -hmm. our captain from last year, he, he transferred in from another school, and I think his his level was raised by tenfold probably in, oh. in two years. He he went from being kind of like you know a talented guy, very talented guy, like, like not the kind of flashy. Maybe like sometimes he plays well, sometimes he doesn't. Just being absolute rock. Mm -hmm. for for Kentucky I don't think he lost a match in, in the NTA tournament um, mm -hmm. last year so no I, so yeah I, I was uh, that's a big yeah. eye opener and for you as yeah. um kind of choosy and talk to us about the different culture because the Ivy League still has a lot of good talent they have a lot of good teams they have a lot of teams that go decently well in the NCAAs individually or as a team What's the culture difference for you kind of, kind of sw switching from an Ivy League 
conference to the SEC? Yeah, definitely. Um, so basically what happened was in, in Cornell, we had one year where we played, I think we we're 16 in the country. We had a guy, David Wilson, who was, um, I want to say seven in the country, seven or nine mm-hmm. in the country. You know, we had a very good team. We're doing very well. I think we lost really close to Michigan four three. Um, beat a couple of good schools and like we were, we had a lot of momentum and that's like that atmosphere that we had in our practice and, and kind of in, in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Um, that one year is kind of how I feel all the time when I'm in the locker room or when I'm training at, at Kentucky. Wow. Um, I think that the guys are just, it, it is also, you know, and, and obviously all, all respect to my teammates. I think my teammates at Cornell were, were amazing and they pushed me to become the player that I am now. Mm-hmm. But um, at the end of the day, the goals are, can be a little bit different in terms of for us, like at Kentucky out of, let's say there's 12 guys on the team and probably mm-hmm. 10, at least 10 of them are thinking I'm going to play professional tennis as my, that's my job. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas you look at like for, for Cornell out of 13 guys, there's probably going to be realistically five um, mm-hmm. that are thinking four or five that are thinking I'm going to play professional tennis. So, mm-hmm. you know, just having that, that many hungry guys, that many guys like, who want to get better because they know there's something beyond college for them out there. Mm-hmm. They, they want to, you know what I mean? They want to make this their job. That makes things a lot, um, a lot more competitive on the yeah. court for sure during practice, but it means that we, we get each other better a little bit faster. So it's just that edge, you know? It, it seems like there's that different energy that you guys have too, when it comes to Kentucky. And when I went to visit last year, you can see not just the intensity, but the mindset changes so dramatically. And so, so perfectly into a college tennis atmosphere. And it's fascinating to see kind of that tr- uh, progression from Ivy League to pro, which you're still doing to, to Kentucky to now still doing and playing on the professional tour. And unfortunately, you have to play another Kentucky guy that we love, Gabby. Um, yeah. But for you, it, it, every time we see a highlight of you, every time we try to post a highlight of you, your intensity and your athleticism is remarkable. How would you how would you personally describe your game? Um, well, <laughs> I, yeah, like I, I've always been kind of a you know a very aggressive person uh, mm-hmm. on the court. Uh, I don't know if you've you know if you've talked to me off the court, you probably know that I'm fairly laid back, relaxed. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like to. I don't like to cause a lot of problems or get into arguments, but when it comes to getting on the court, it's the complete opposite. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I want all the problems in the world and I make sure that, you know, that my opponent knows it too, because it's, it's all, that's, that's what I love about tennis, man. Like it's so, it's so personal. You look into your opponent's eyes and you look into your opponent's eyes and you can like, you had a jumping overhead at 40 all like deuce, you know, four all in the third set on their serve. And you just look in their eyes and they're like, oh my God, I, how, how am I going to beat this guy? You know, like, yeah. I love that look. I love it. Okay. It's, 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 it's tough to describe and without sounding like a complete psychopath, but you know, it's, you know, it's, that's kind of my, what I build my game on is just being that, uh, the guy who, who goes after him, who mm-hmm. goes after his opponents. Mm-hmm. You, you might beat me, but. You know, if you if you walk away with a win against me, you know you've earned it. You know, yeah, I yeah, love that. I'm never gonna give it to you. Yeah, I I love that because it, it, I feel like from a fighting mentality, it's you can't you know, one you can't give up, and two it becomes more of it, just putting a hundred and ten percent every single time you go out onto the court. And I feel like yes. no one, if anyone loses to you or beats you, I should say, other way around. Like they can't walk off the court without being mentally drained. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And, yeah. And that, and for you too, how did you develop this kind of mentality and how did you develop your game into quote unquote, not a psychopathic mentality? <laughs> um, yeah. It actually happened pretty recently. Last year I had a kind of an epiphany. Um, I needed, 
to have a purpose as a player. I didn't have much purpose and I was playing, you know, talented tennis, obviously, and I had a couple of good wins, but I didn't mm-hmm. really have any um, sustained success on tour. Mm-hmm. And um, it was actually after I played, I lost three or four matches in a row. I lost in Dominican um, to a guy that I'd beat the week before. Mm-hmm. Very good player. Shout out to Osgur Hoisen. Very good player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, but it definitely was an eye opener for me. I went there and then I went to the next week and I lost again pretty badly in the first round. Then I went to the next week and I was losing really badly in the first round again in Kazakhstan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I kind of that match, I, I ended up losing 6-4 in the third, but I did turn it around. I was down 4-0 and ended up winning the second set. Okay. Um, took it to a third. He was up 4-0 again, serving, came back to 4-all, you know fighting kind of getting back into it and i was like okay i need an identity because Mm -hmm. me coming over here and just saying i'm going to beat him by playing better tennis than him that's very fake um and it doesn't it's obviously not getting the job done yeah (laughs) so so i need to say like i'm gonna live or die by playing this way Mm -hmm. and it just so happened that i realized you know i've been i would have been talking with some of my friends um jay clark you know some of the guys who have been on the challenge tour for a while and you're mm-hmm. like, yeah you have some of the best qualities you have some of the best movement of anyone that i've seen on the tour so i i'm just thinking i have these strengths how do i use my strengths in a in a smart way um mm-hmm. that my opponents can't counter even if they see it coming mm-hmm. and it just so happened that for for that time it was you know bum rushing everyone at the neck it's you know, I mean, with my arms, it's going to be oh, tough geez. to tough to pass I me. Mean, it's true. You know, it's tough to pass me. You can't get through me because I have very good reflexes. Yeah. You can't get over me because I have a very good vertical. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, you're going to have to maybe get lucky once or twice mm-hmm. to to get you know to get past me at the net. Um, and I'm like, okay, that's that seems like what I'm going to have to just live or die with. And I played mm-hmm. the next match as a challenger in, in yeah. Kazakhstan. And I played against a guy with no singles ranking, um, only a doubles ranking, very good doubles player. But mm-hmm. um, he, he actually ended up having two match points on me, serving for the match twice, uh, had to dig, had to grind that one out like seven, six in the third. And then I lost two games in my next two matches, ended up qualifying, winning a, winning a round. I took Saffle in like four and four, yeah. you know, played a good match. And then the next week made a quarterfinal of the So like that. Yeah kind of reinforced my belief in myself. I think if I had lost in the first round, you know, trying to do the, let's say one thing that probably yeah. would have been a little rough for me, but luckily I did get that when I think that turned things around in my mind for mm-hmm. how I need to play. I have a lot more purpose now in my game. I, I, I love that. that. I no, no, <laughs> no, it does. No, trust me. It does because it, it, for me, there's always that difference between confidence and cockiness and i feel like it's a very thin line when it comes to dealing with how you can be confident in yourself without sounding you're overbearing on someone else and it and and it's so rare to think about too because i feel like it's especially as a college tennis player as well that's playing challengers taking that mindset do you feel like that college mindset gives you that killer instinct coming into challenger tour play um yes and no okay yes because i think that in terms of college you, you kind of have to go after your opponent a little bit yeah. you have to have that um and, and it is a little bit of a more of a mental game i think mm-hmm. in in college than it is on the tour and in a different way obviously on the tour mm-hmm. you have to be a little bit more strategic you have mm-hmm. to be smarter in how you place the ball, what you do at what time, and where you go, that sort of stuff. You don't necessarily need that in college. You look at the best college players, you'll see, like, I mean, Liam is a great example. You know, mentally just kind of gets into his opponent's heads. Mm-hmm. Um, he's so mentally strong that he can turn around. I mean, great example is yesterday. Last night he played against Domenko. He was mm-hmm. down and out in the first, like, 30 minutes of the match the guy was absolutely destroying him just playing some of the best tennis that i've seen him play mm-hmm. you know guys serving three aces a game easily like hitting his forehand well everything's working fantastic for him mm-hmm. and somehow you know one or two points here and there where liam just digs it out scraps it out gets into the match you know fights back and then that little seed of doubt is planted in his opponent's mind and that grows um 
to become something that can lose a match for his opponent or he can come and win this match, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So I think in that sense, it's, it's great, but also the flip side is right. You have to deal with a little bit more mentally from, from the other guys and me playing at two in, in Kentucky is a very new experience for me because well, first of all, I, I'm not really used to playing <laughs> very often, but also because in our in our facility, there's um, our opponents' benches are right behind the second court, mm-hmm. so at any given time, I'm hearing just full volume um, buffoonery. <laughs> I feel like that's a bad word. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> I don't. I don't mean it in a derogatory way, but you know, I'm just hearing full-blown just yelling screaming all Mm -hmm. kinds of stuff from directly behind me like five feet away and i'm trying to i'm trying to focus and serve i'm trying to focus and do this this stuff it's very difficult to focus i think on the specifics when you're playing in a college match it's difficult and whereas in a a professional match you have to focus on those specifics to win the match Mm -hmm. because it's it's a game of very fine margins yeah but you know in college it's more of a game of like who's mentally stronger and just yeah. trust their training, right? Yeah. So that's, I guess, that's kind of what I meant by that. No, it, it, and it's a perfect answer too, because it, I feel like a lot of people get mixed up of the idea of playing college tennis and taking that mentality into a pro environment and maybe throwing off their pro, uh, the other pro who never really experienced college tennis and that type of intensity. So it's a good clarification of defining what you need to do mentally, not just physically. Yeah versus yeah. a college and a pro environment. And I think the last question for you is because I know you don't have that much time. So I appreciate you doing this, man. I really yeah, do. Um, how would you, what would be your goal by the end of this year, whether that's pro level or college level or personal level uh, for your game? What What's your goal for 2023? Um. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I've had some very, well-defined goals i think very achievable goals for for myself in terms of professional tennis which is i want to be able to play a slam by the end of the year i think that's achievable if i have one one or two more good tournaments in the next three months i have Mm -hmm. no points to defend until basically july so i think that's a very achievable goal i think that our team has in terms of college our team has what it takes to win not only indoors but also the national championship Mm -hmm. um there are a lot of very good teams out there, very, very good teams. But the way that we've been progressing, we're not even at, I would say we're close to like 50% of our our full potential right now, Full even just in college. I mean, some of the guys like, you know, I, I'm sure you guys haven't even seen our five and six really play, but those yeah. guys are really, really good. Yeah. I mean, they are really good. Like. I I see them in practice. They're beating, they're beating me. They're beating Drax in practice, yeah. you know, like they're, they're good. Um, yeah. Our four, our four is amazing. Taha, mm. he's, he's about to go play. He's amazing. Josh is, I don't, I mean, they've, he's barely lost a match in the last two years. Yeah. Drax, myself, I think we're like, Drax is ready already for college. I, <laughs> I need a little bit of more time to, yeah, to acclimate, you know, but, <laughs> uh, but once I get there, it's just, I mean, it's, it's going to be really tough for teams to beat us and now they don't really have the luxury of saying oh we're winning the doubles point for sure yeah because i think doubles wise we are a lot better i mean yeah. no offense to last year's doubles teams but i think we are a lot better this year yeah um in doubles and and we will continue to improve a lot in doubles so mm-hmm. winning the nca tournament is a very achievable goal for our for us um those are the are my two main goals i have some other you know smaller goals for myself and just my growth as a person uh, i think mm-hmm. it's important to to grow I'm, I'm learning french right i would like to finish learning french by the end of the year <laughs> most of my teammates i don't know uh, you probably know most of my teammates speak french and yes because it's half like the to be canadian to... national team for tennis that's <laughs> yeah, basically what pretty Kentucky much. is. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah pretty much <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's another goal for me personally. I I just you know, I like to grow my, my myself. Uh, but that. yeah, that's that's I, I love that man. And guys, if you don't follow him on Instagram, please go f- show him some love down below in the description. Go follow Kentucky Tennis. Go follow him during this entire challenger experience that he's doing. And I definitely think for us going into this, I definitely think you're gonna make a grand slam. 
uh, at least qualify. So keep that up, man. We really do appreciate it. And good luck this week in Cleveland. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. No worries. Appreciate it, man.